I can't believe it. The show's tomorrow night. We haven't got the big finale written yet. We haven't even got a premise. Zilch is what we got. All because Mr. Smarty Pants over there has rejected all my brilliant ideas. I've been in the business for 30 years. Yeah, and you spent the last 26 talking about the first four. I like that, you guys. We got work to do and it's not getting done this way. You're right, Stan. It's time to put petty differences aside and act like professionals. <laughs> OK. What we need is a big finish. Something to build on, a real showstopper. I got it. Bob the Jackhammer Medich versus King Caribou in a Texas Chainsaw Deathmatch. Yeah, I like that sing. Yeah. You call that a wrestling match? I call it garbage. You can't put two bad guys in a ring together. The fans got to have somebody to root for. Oh yeah, Mickey's right. Uh, besides, we just got a memo here. It says, no more death matches involving power tools. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. Uh, then you guys come up with something, OK? How about the midgets? Everybody yeah. loves the midgets. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Mickey. If you ask me, those midget matches are in bad taste. Because those little guys make fools themselves just for a living. So what else are they going to do? Stock the bottom two shelves at the Kmart? Get serious. <laughs> midgets are a main event. All we need is a championship match. How are you talking? World champion, Muscle Man Morgan, defends his title against whom? A couple of midgets. <laughs> Master the Ghetto Blaster Jones. Bingo. You call that a wrestling match? I call it a bucket of chicken vomit. No, 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 this is great. <laughs> this is great. Remember a few weeks ago when Morgan and his tag team partner, John Thunderbutt Baker, took on Jones in the castrator in their cage match? Thunderbutt was just about to pin the castrator when Master the Ghetto Blaster Jones comes up behind him, starts whacking him on the head with his jam box, right? Now Thunderbutt is still in a coma, Champ is Bob to get revenge. Oh, you're talking about that tape recorder thing there. Yeah. Yo, whatever happened to the good old-fashioned wrestling? Nowadays, you're gonna hit somebody on the head with something all the time. Let me tell you one thing, sir. Shock is not wrestling. Wrestling is wrestling. And that's what you said about the pointed objects, man. And we got a 30 share with that one. Face it, old man, you and your ideas are outdated. Oh, you talk to me like that? I was writing wrestling, then you was wearing diapers. Yeah, and I'm writing wrestling now that you're wearing diapers. <laughs> a comedian you should be. You call that a joke? I call it the stuff I scrape out from between my toes. You know what I have? <laughs> All right. All right, uh, let's go with the emotional angle. Before the match begins, Two paramedics bring the champ's comatose tag team partner in on a stretcher and place him outside the ring next to the champ's corner. <laughs> That's good. That's real good. The champ and Jones enter the ring. It's obvious they hate each other's guts. Yeah, lots of smearing, staring. You know what happens. Master, the girl put him up all that dare thing here. He comes out of his corner to shake hands with the champ. But the champ, he's a good guy. No way he'll have fun that. Uh-uh. The champ goes back to his corner. But then, the challenger, because he's a dirty bum, he runs it up the ring when the champ is not looking and gives him the flying poke to the back of the head. Kick. You want to start the match with a tired old cliche? I invented that cliche. Besides, it's tradition. Why not, Buck? It'll set the tempo for the match. All right, all right, all right, we'll go with it. But instead of applying pork chops, have Jones grab a chair and throw hard for the champ with it. Already oh, with the chair. You got to build up to a big moment like the chair. I hate to be with Mickey again, so I won't. Let's use the chair. <laughs> All right, but then the match goes into the toilet. Don't say I didn't warn you. OK, so the champ is reeling with pain, and Jones is whacking with the chair. Yeah, but he can't be disqualified because it's a no disqualifications match. Yeah, so Jones grabs the champ, gives him a headbutt. Farm the nose and open the kidney. I drop it to the stomach and then they start to wrestle for a while. Right. And then Jones picks up the champ and body slams him. You don't body slam the champ. Nobody body slams the champ. It's a tradition. All right, I like that. Let's build a new tradition. Go ahead, write that down. The fans are going to scream, buddy, waiter. The producer's going to want your head on a stick. Listen, Mickey, a little change never hurt anybody. 1958. It's a crisp October night at the Polo Grounds. Oh, 
I'll make you not another trip down memory lane. John the Beef Nakosha puts the heavyweight title on the line against the wild and unpredictable Mr. Hoyden. The crowd is hungry in anticipation. They've been looking forward to this one for a long, long time. The match goes as expected at voice with Nakosha dominating his opponent. Ooh, ooh. But then, suddenly, Mr. Hoyden picks up the champ and prepares to body slam him. The crowd can't believe it. Oi! They say, oi! The champ is in the air, about to be body slammed. Then, suddenly, sanity prevails, and the young champ breaks loose, bounces off the top rope, and clacks his head on the cement there. Outside the lane. Oh, Here's an idea, guys. <laughs> How about we don't body slam the champ? Why, my man? Guys, it's not like I have a word to leave off. This script you've written for me? Uh, sure, Chuck. Is there a problem? <laughs> well, you know me. I hate to be a complainer. Yeah, I know. But there's a part in here that's just got me wrong. <laughs> now, you've got me stealing a box of popcorn from a kid and uh, shoving it in my home space. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been the unknown smiler for eight years now, and I just don't think it's in my character to do something like that. Is it the popcorn itself that bothers you, Chuck, or the fact that you're stealing it from some kid? Well, both, really. Plus, I just don't think the smart would resort to illegal, dirty tactics. Well, your opponent just threw a cement block at you. Oh, I know, I know, I know, but I, I just don't see the motivation. I mean, retaliation is just not my shtick. Okay, Chuck, if, if you're that unhappy with it, we'll cut it for you. Anything else? <clears throat> well, just one other thing. Um, about the line, now I'm really mad. How would it be if I were to sort of change that line to something like, uh, Chuck, I gotta admit, now you're starting to tamper. Now I'm really mad work, oh, trust me. What about the delivery? I mean, I'm, I'm not used to actually saying lines, just sort of screaming. I'm gonna tell you the same thing that John Ford told John Wayne. Play it out, dude. Play it out. <laughs> Play it out. Play it out. Now I'm really mad. Give it more, Chuck. Now I'm really mad. Great, now you're mad, Chuck. Right, I'm really mad. Really mad, Chuck. Now I'm really mad. Really mad. Now I'm really mad. Really mad. Now I'm really mad. Now I'm really mad. Good, Mike. That's great. Really mad. Keep working on it, Chuck. Oh, the man is a pain in the ass. The man is a perfectionist. I all remember his father. God rest his soul. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. One. Nikki, you wouldn't know real wrestling if it 
walked up to you, shook your hand, and introduced itself. I said, shut up your mouth, Mickey. You wouldn't know real wrestling if you met it in a bar, took it home, and slept with it twice. That's it. That's it. Nobody talks to me like that. One gets away with it.